makers mentality home makers if you say a power soap product they are giving a free bucket they will buy it rather than going to a rin product because of our economic standard of living we will feel oh while i buy a soap if i am getting a bucket i can use to wash the cloth why not i buy the power soap instead of the rin soap that is our mentality but in united states it is other way because here there is no bargain system it is all fixed rate system so people will think the actual rate is actually 50 dollars there is a 50 percent discount on top of it which i'm getting for 25 dollars i have a 15 percent special coupon a coupon offered by jc penny the coupon will be in everyone's hand jc penny knows about it but he will say i honor you as my prestigious customer an extra 15 percent discount because you appeared on a survey take the product for only 18 dollars at final a 50 dollar product they are giving for 18 dollar but they know whether the promotion has added an extra amount of sale or not that is the point there so we are trying to analyze that so the second step declare the grain grain for me is the lowest level of data that we capture in a data warehouse so we'll have to declare the grain do you want to catch each and every transaction for example if you want to analyze a customer you don't need to catch entire items that he purchased in his uh, catalog if you look at if you look at uh, a, a customer's uh, receipt a customer will spend 300 rupees when he go to an uh, grocery store he has hundreds of items in his basket but are you do you want even to record how much quantity he has purchased by item is that the grain or granularity you want or you want at the high level saying each invoice the invoice one two three four has made a revenue of three hundred dollars so and so customer bought it it is a higher level of transaction if we go even higher the same customer would have visited the same store three times a day do you want each transaction by the same customer or transaction by uh, for the full day by a customer it is all up to you how you want it to maintain you want it to allot the space in such a way you will have to identify your grain grain cannot change later in uh, in the later time you can keep adding more dimensions and more fat tables whatever you want but you cannot change the grain so declaring the grain if you make a wrong if you make a mistake there the purpose of data warehouse is ruined business is going to be very unhappy about it so be very careful while you declare a grain once the business process has been identified the data warehouse team faces a serious decision about the granularity so that is very important and then what level of data detail should be made available in the dimensional model so the dimensional model as i told you you will have to define the grain at what level individual transaction level or invoice level or the or the time factor by the day level you have to determine that that is the second step uh, i missed to read out the uh, the bottom the footnotes there the first dimensional model built should be the one with the most impact it should answer the most pressing business questions and it should be readily accessible for data extraction so the purpose of building the entire data model is to answer a business question so always if you declare a grain it should be exactly what the business wants they wanted to see a single transaction made by customer design it at that level so you can't make assumption saying i can convince the customer no he will not get convinced he will say i am investing million dollars and you are building me a data warehouse which is not uh, meeting my requirements so be very perfect towards the uh, design uh, and uh, satisfy your customer so let us see uh, the the third step choose the dimensions a data warehouse almost always demands data expressed with the lowest possible grain of each dimension not because query wants to do it individual low or uh, low level rows but because the queries need to cut through the details in a very precise way so you can keep on adding 100 number of dimensions there is no restriction a fact can be surrounded by 1000 dimensions let me put out the major three dimensions to sell a product is 
product, market and time. Beyond that, if you want it to analyze, like the data mining tools can do it. When you say product, it can analyze the product category, product line, is it a fresh food or, an, or a frozen good or, or non-perishable, perishable, there are many, uh, many things you can actually uh, try to dig into. When you say time, you can say a day, a minute, a second, that is possible. When you say a market, it can be a country, it can be a territory, it can be a state, it can be a district, it can be a small city, it can be a small village, it can be a small store, possible. So you will have to also determine what dimensional level you want it to do. So that is the, 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 uh, the way you have to choose the dimension. If your business says, I want the data only at a district level, try to do the data at uh, the underlying level, maybe a regional, regional level, which is, which is like uh, local, like Amir Pet uh, uh, level, you will have to do it if they ask for a Hyderabad level. Why I say that is business comes back later. Saying, though I asked at a Hyderabad level, which is a small state in Andhra Pradesh, sorry, a small city in Andhra Pradesh, now can we dig a little lower? I see that there is a good sale in Abids. I wanted to maintain more inventory at Abids. Can you dig a little more? You can't say no to business. So that is an analyst uh, thing. A business analyst will be very optimistic guy. But you you the data architect or the analyst has to design it like this if they if the customer says there is going to be only 20 gigabytes of data in a month design it for at least 200 gigabytes of data because the business will grow for sure do it 10 times more than what he expects so once the grain of the fact table has been chosen the date product and the store dimension fall under fall out immediately we assume that the calendar date is a date value delivered to us by the point of the system. Later we will discuss what to do if we also get a time of the day along with the date. So what he is telling is, green you will have to declare whether you want it to capture it by minutes or seconds or at a day level. Your receipt will have date and time but do you want it to do it at a date and time or only at the date level? You decide that. Within the framework of primary dimensions, we can ask whether other dimensions can be generated, can, can be attributed, or can be attributed the data such as the promotion under which the product is sold. Okay, it is all he is talking about even whether you want to also embed the promotion dimension for a product. So under certain promotion it is sold. You are trying to identify, not only identify how many soaps are being sold, at that time what is the promotion going on? Buy three, get one free is the promotion. You want it to monitor the sale when the buy three, get one free is in market. What is the sales? So if you want to design it like that, you need to have the promotion information available and every day it has to be keep updated. Because the promotion is many types, right? You can advertise in a, a television, on a radio, in a newspaper, or you can say buy one, get one free, or you say referral, or you say uh, kind of an... Uh, uh, holiday promotion saying we'll do a uh, bumper draw every promotion has to be identified in the promotion table only then you can identify a product is sold under what promotion so finally uh, let me read out the footnotes there we express this as another design principle a careful grain statement determines the primary primary dimensionality of a fact table so when you say grain when you declare a grain it actually gives you the dimensionality of the fact table. You cannot have the uh, dimension at a day level and say the fact table to be at the lower level. If you are trying to maintain the fact table at a, each second of the transaction, at the time or even the time stamp of it, then your dimension table of the time also should be uh, supporting that. Because if you are going to query saying for one hour what is the sale, you cannot get it if your time dimension doesn't support it. So you will have to make sure that and it is then often possible to add more dimensions to basic grain of the fact table always you can keep adding where there are additional dimensions naturally like uh, sorry naturally take one only one value under each combination of a primary dimension in additional dimension 
if the additional dimension violates the grain by causing additional factors to be generated then the grain statement must be revised to accommodate the dimension what he says is in a regular term we'll see uh, not not too much of theory if you are saying your analysis go is going to be at a very lower level you'll have to redefine the grain as as i told you it is all going to work as a repetitive process if you first do a, a, a do a uh, dimensional model and lock it there it is not going to work you will finally generate a few or a report saying this is what you can get out of the data warehouse then the business user says i want more then go and redefine your grain because the business a uh, user is cha changed his mind he don't want the transaction at a day level he wanted to maintain the time factor he wants the 24 transactions to be captured every hour transaction to be captured when he says that your fact table will change and also the dimension tables will change at least the time dimension table will change so make sure uh, we we do that in the dimensional model so finally what you see at the bottom is the actual dimensional uh, fully dimensionally model the uh, point of sale retail transaction fact table it is the dimension model for that retail sales fact let us uh, see how we identify the facts now the fourth and final step in the design is to take a careful determination of what fact will appear in the fact table again the grain declaration helps anchor our thinking simply put the facts the facts must be true to the grain the individual line item on the on the point of sale transaction in this case when we consider potential facts uh, so uh, sorry there is a small mistake in the powerpoint this has to be the second point when considering potential facts you should you again may discover that adjustments need to be made to either our earlier grain assumption or to the dimension or choice of dimension so what he is saying is identify the facts the fact is a product is sold a product is sold and how you want it to identify you will have to determine based on that fact and how the business wants to analyze it and based on the fact the dimensions are going to change that is what is uh, being mentioned on there the facts collected by point of sale system include the sales quantity either the number of cans of chicken noodle soup sold per unit sale price and the sales dollar amount this is the minimum requirement you need to have how many quantity is being sold and what is the a price of each uh, item sold and what is the dollar amount totally generated the sales dollar amount equals the sales quantity multiplied by the unit this is simple math man you will have to uh, multiply the sales quantity into the unit price to uh, uh, get the total dollar amount it is that that simple math so more sophisticated point of system uh, point of sale system also provide a standard dollar cost for the product as delivered to the store by vendor presuming that the cost part uh, it is nothing else than a um, uh, few of a very sophisticated point of sale system do you do your business globally the transaction would have happened in rupees but if it is a us based organization at that point it will convert the data i um, mean the rupee as of that point and it will produce you the uh, report all we are uh, telling is if it is an international sale let us say a transaction would have happened in some country in their own currency but the business cares about how much how many dollars you earn not how many rupees because there makes a difference every day the dollar rate changes for at least four to five times the opening of a dollar today can be 44 dollars 35 cents after an hour it falls to 44 and tonight it falls to 43 so you are losing some money there so a most sophisticated fact table will also accommodate the standard dollar cost for the product so most of the companies take as an average to maintain it easily they will take an overall day average of a dollar and then determine but few companies they purposefully maintain it every time when they do a math they will try to get the actual dollar rate from the market and then do it it is a more sophisticated way of building a fact table so any questions so far guys so we are already taking a deep dive into the retail retail uh, sales part so any questions so far i am going with the uh, uh, dimension normalization which is a slow play